Charlie Munger, the famed investor, died the other day, rest in peace, 99 years old. A wealth of wisdom, apparently there's gonna be like a re-release of an almanac of just some of his sayings and aphorisms. But I was reading a particular article about his death and this fact just blew my mind. In 1964, had you invested $1,000 into the company he shared with other famed investor, Warren Buffett, a company called Berkshire Hathaway, it would be worth more than $10 million today. What kind of growth rate is that? That seems excessive, right? And on the one hand, it definitely is, but it's not necessarily as excessive as you might expect for two reasons. The first reason is 1964 was a long time ago. It was almost 60 years ago. When you let things grow over a long amount of time, you get to take advantage of what's called compound interest. And one way we can calculate compound interest is with this formula. There are various ways to state this formula, but at the most basic level, we're gonna take some kind of principal investment, which we'll call P. That's the money that we're starting off with. We're going to invest that money at some rate R, and we're going to leave that money invested over a period of time T. In this case, we're going to measure it in years. Because we know the starting amount was 1,000 and the ending amount is over 10 million, which we're just going to call 10 million, and we know the amount of time was roughly 60 years, we can actually plug those values into this equation and come back with the growth rate. What that equation looks like after we plug in our numbers is 10 million equals 1,000 times 1 plus r to the 60th power. And again, obviously, it's the 1 plus r to the 60th power that's doing the work of turning our $1,000 into 10 million. Let's actually move that $1,000 over so we can just think of this in terms of basically a multiplier. To get from 1,000 to 10 million, we're actually 10,000 xing our money. We're multiplying our initial investment by 10,000. So we really want to know 1 plus some rate raised to the 60th power, what rate would cause that to equal 10,000? To do this part, we have to undo a power of 60, meaning we're going to take the 60th root of 10,000. Now, for sure, I cannot do that in my head, but typing that into a calculator, we come up with roughly 1.166. Since this is going to be equal to the 1 plus r, that must mean the rate of growth itself over those 60 years is 0.166, or if we express it as a percentage, 16.6%, which again isn't necessarily eye-popping, but when you keep in mind the fact that the stock market on average grows somewhere between 7 and 10 percent, depending on what kind of time frame you're looking at, it is pretty amazing that Warren Buffett and Charlie Munger could consistently basically double the rate of growth of the stock market every year on average for 60 years. Now that we've figured that out, here's a fun little extension of the problem. Ten million dollars is nice, but so is a million dollars, and 60 years is a really long time to wait. If I decide that I'm happy with a million dollars, rather than 10 million, how much more quickly can I get that money if I'm investing with Berkshire Hathaway and they keep giving me back 16.6% returns year after year? Is it a tenth as much time, so it only takes me six years to get there? That sounds pretty good to me. Or maybe, you know, logarithms and exponential stuff is weird. Maybe it takes me half as much time, 30 years. But still, 30 years with a million dollars sounds better to me than having to wait 60 years for 10 million dollars. Well, here's how we could figure it out. First, First of all, we don't really need an A and a P in this case. If we just keep in mind, all right, we started out with $1,000, trying to get to a million dollars, that's a thousand times as much money. It's actually just the ratio of A to P that we're interested in here. Thousand X ratio we can set equal to one plus R, but again, this time we know what that is because we just solved for one plus R. So that's 1.166 raised to the T power where now T is our unknown. We want to know how much time does it take this 16.6% return to get to a thousand xing our money. Now the temptation here is to try and do basically the same move we did before when we took a 60th root. But the problem right now is if I tried to take a root on both sides, it's that number that is precisely what I don't know. I don't know if it's six years, 10 years, 30 years, whatever. And so I don't know what to type into a calculator for the 60th root or 10th root or whatever else of a thousand. When it's the exponent that we don't know, we actually need a different tool called a logarithm. We can take the logarithm of both sides of this equation. I'm just gonna use the 
natural log. The particular type of log actually doesn't really matter, but what's gonna happen is on the left, we're now looking at the natural log of 1,000, and on the right, we're looking at the natural log of 1.166 raised to the t power. But that's good because logarithms have this funny little property where any kind of exponents in the logarithm become a multiplier. And so this is actually the same thing as the natural log of 1,000 equals t times the natural log of 1.166. Now the key here is to recognize both natural log 1000 and natural log 1.166 are just numbers. They're weird numbers, but they're just numbers. And so to isolate t right now, all we have to do is divide by the natural log of 1.166. And again, this is something we can type into our calculator. When we do type that into the calculator to evaluate, what we end up with is 10, 6, 30, no. 44.978 eight for T. So it takes us 45 years to get to that first million dollars starting from our thousand dollar investment, but then just another 15 years to go from a million to 10 million. This is the power of compound growth. This is why when you think about retirement and investing, the earlier you start, the better. People tend to think, oh, I can always just make it up later on by saving more money. But to genuinely compensate, you would have to make the more amount of money you save exponentially larger compared to what would happen if you just started earlier. So I don't know how many kids are out there watching this video, but kids, believe your parents and believe your math teachers. The earlier you can start saving money, the better. And of course, it's also nice if you can find the next Berkshire Hathaway.